Maureen Dwyer, Chief Inspector in the National Education Inspectorate, assumed responsibilities as Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, effective today. This follows Acting Permanent Secretary Dr. Grace McLean being sent on leave effective today, October 14, 2021. This in light of the Auditor General's report concerning fiduciary and related issues at the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. Regarding how the Joint Committee on Tertiary Education, JCTE, was given more than $120 million by the Education Ministry. Investigations are currently being pursued. Now, in the report tabled in the House of Representatives yesterday, the Auditor General called on Education Minister Faithful Williams to call in the police. The Auditor General recommended that a probe be launched to determine how nearly $124 million that the JCTE received from the Ministry was spent between 2018 and 2020. In her report, the Auditor General noted that in her role as Acting Permanent Secretary, Dr. McLean suggested in a 2020 meeting that she had no knowledge that the JCTE's chairman had formed a private entity. It was further noted that having purportedly been made aware of the formation of the private company, Dr. McLean still allowed the transfer of funds to the JCTE amounting to $11.2 million between April and June 2020. She faced questions arising from a separate Auditor General report a few years ago that found that she had facilitated a party for former Caribbean Maritime University President Professor Fritz Pinnock. The party was reportedly paid for by the Ministry. McLean has insisted that all her actions were above board during her stewardship as the Ministry's Chief Accounting Officer. It's understood that the Auditor General became aware of the activities of the JCTE through its audit of the Caribbean Maritime University, CMU. It was found that the chairman of the JCTE had funded a party for the Permanent Secretary in 2017, the same year that the MOEYI made the decision to facilitate JCTE being assigned a TRN. The permanent secretary at the time was Dean Roy Bernard, while McLean was the chief education officer. The government in a statement said that Dr. McLean's leave will ensure there is no hindrance, real or perceived, to the course of the investigations, adding that the government anticipates that the investigations will be thorough and expeditious. In the meantime, Former Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Dean Roy Bernard, is hitting back at the Auditor General's report calling into question his management of the Joint Committee of Tertiary Education, JCTE. Baseless, that's Dr. Bernard's response to suggestions that inadequate oversight was provided by the Ministry of Education to the JCTE. He says this has not been proven by the documentation provided in the Auditor General's report. Mr. Bernard says he is disappointed that he was not given a draft of the report to properly respond. In tonight's COVID-19 update, six additional COVID-19 related deaths have been recorded in Jamaica, increasing deaths from the virus now to 2,059. The deceased are comprised of five fatalities from St. Elizabeth and a 73-year-old man from St. Catherine. The Ministry of Health and Wellness says the deaths occurred between September 8 and October 12. Meanwhile, there were 215 new cases recorded, ranging in age from 33 days to 95 years, increasing the case total now to 86,722. Now of the new cases, 126 are women and 89 are men. In tonight's COVID-19 parish breakdown, Kingston and St. Andrew recorded 61 cases. St. Catherine recorded 55 cases. St. Thomas, 26 cases. St. Elizabeth, 
13, Clarendon, 10, St. James, 9 cases, Hanover and Portland recorded 8 cases each, Westmoreland, Trelawney and St. Anne recorded 7 cases each, Manchester recorded 4 cases, while St. Mary recorded no cases. In the meantime, there were 176 additional recoveries, increasing the total of recovered persons now to 54,895, of which 29,175 are active. Still tonight, 17-year-old Rohan Murray, otherwise called Kemar of Barry Street, Kingston, was fatally shot by an armed assailant on Fleet Street in the parish yesterday. Reports from the police coming into our news centre tonight are that at approximately 8.12 p.m., Murray was walking along the roadway when he was pounced upon by unknown assailants who chased him and shot him multiple times. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Still tonight, following the seizure of a Ruger 9mm pistol with a number of persons being detained for questioning in a major operation by the security forces along Yaka Avenue in Tower Hill, St. Andrew yesterday. Officer in charge of operations for the St. Andrew South Police Division, Superintendent Damian Manderson explained that the operation was aimed at disrupting criminal activities in the police division. We conducted a cordon and search operation in the Yaka Avenue here in search of wanted men and illegal firearms. During our operation, several premises and houses were searched and we uncovered a Ruger pistol along with 14 rounds and an extended magazine. This is one more firearm off the street. It's 14 more rounds that could easily have been at least 14 more lives. The team continue to be motivated and continue to pursue these criminal gangs that operate across the St. Andrew South Division. We're leaving them no rest period. We're giving them no safe haven as we go after them with all that we have. The team is motivated, the team is encouraged, and we will continue to pursue these criminal elements within our division both men and women, as we know, who are a part of these gangs. Superintendent Manderson pointed out that the police operational and investigative intelligence activities will not cease in efforts to dismantle and disrupt the criminal elements in this area. This morning we came to the, this particular era primarily because of the number of shootings and murders been associated with this gang within the Olympic Garden space in particular. And uh, our activities this morning, while we conclude the cordon search, our operational, investigative and intelligence uh, activities will not cease as we continue to do everything we can to disrupt and dismantle these criminal networks within the St. Andrew South Division. We crave the support of our residents and our communities to, to support us, to speak to us, call the emergency numbers, call um, the, very, the numerous hotlines that we have provided. And if there is any doubt and you want to speak with me directly, you can call me at 832-9082. 832-9082. Talk to us. You can trust me. We can do this and we can restore peace and calm and tranquility to our country, one community at a time. But it begins with you. In news from St. Anne, a barber who reportedly fatally stabbed a vendor during a dispute in Ocho Rios on Tuesday has been taken into custody. The deceased has been identified as 21-year-old Darnell Baxter, pushcart vendor of Harrison Town in the parish. Reports coming into our news center are that at approximately 10 a.m., Baxter was at his stall in close proximity to a barber shop in the town's capital when he walked over to a barber shop where the accused man works. An argument reportedly developed between them and the barber allegedly brandished a knife which he used to stab Baxter in the region of his upper body. The police were summoned and upon their arrival at the location, the accused barber was taken into custody. The wounded vendor was transported to hospital where he was pronounced dead. In other news tonight, hearings at the Santa Cruz Courthouse were this morning affected as police cordoned off a section of the building following a break-in at the facility. 
It is reported that sanitation items and undisclosed documents were stolen during the break-in. It is believed that the incident occurred last night. Originally built as the Petty Sessions Court, the facility is mere meters from the Santa Cruz Police Station. The $11 million building was formally opened by then-Justice Minister A.J. Nicholson in 2007. Continuing with the news tonight, the new National Identification and Registration Act, NIDS, was passed in the House of Representatives yesterday, nearly two and a half years after it was ruled in court to be unconstitutional. Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the bill, which was passed with 14 amendments, will place Jamaica among strong digital economies. He said modern digital economies are built on implementing strong digital identities for citizens who embrace private rights and security as the cornerstone for building sustainable, transparent and robust identification systems. Mr. Holness added that it is for this reason that the government is concurrently establishing the Information Commissioner's Office under the Data Protection Act and the National Identification and Registration Inspectorate as an independent oversight body under the NIDS. He further stated, the decision to not appeal the April 12, 2019 ruling of the Constitutional Court that overturned the NIDS was not unanimously agreed to within the government. And that's our news package for you tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Mellow TV Evening News at 8. I am Shelly Ann Hill. Do stay safe and pleasant viewing.